Good morning. Uh, I'm Jason Cho from Knowledge Solar. So today uh, my speech is about uh, PV30 and the benefit of Longi's counting edge model technology. So as we all know, the amount of solar energy received by the Earth is large. But, uh, you know, the density is low and the cost of collection and utilization is high. So the error of PV is a process of which the collection efficiency is increasing, but the cost of utilization is re reducing. Uh, so uh, the first is uh, PV uh, 1.0. It's uh, about uh, early research and development and application. Uh, PV, PV 1.0 uh, started from uh, 1915s to 2000. The earlier application including uh, space program, off-grid program, and also small-scale PV power plant. Uh, from uh, in that peer, uh, in this period, uh, the features uh, include uh, mono uh, is mainly uh, mono silicon based, based, and uh, the annual production mostly is about uh, less than 100 megawatts. And the mainstream uh, module efficiency efficiency is uh, less than 10 percent. Uh, so uh, the advanced PV cell technology has been uh, demonstrated in lab, but the commercial product is still with no efficiency, high cost, hindering one deployment. The second is uh, PV uh, 2.0. It's, uh, it's about to start from 2000 to 2016. In 2000, Germany uh, adopted the renewable energy law award feed uh, FIT power, uh, PV power generation. So the large scale pro, uh, projects uh, uh, started. Uh, in this period, uh, uh, the accumulated global PV installation capacity increased from 2 gigawatt to uh, 300 gigawatt. Uh, while well, the alloy installation capacity increased from uh, 400 meg uh, megawatt to 70 gigawatt. Uh, for uh, the cost of uh, PV projects uh, is uh, uh, start from uh, $4 uh, per watt to uh, 0 0.4 uh, watt uh, uh, dollars. Uh, for the uh, uh, models in this period, uh, is dominated by multi silicon models, and the main uh, stream model efficiency is uh, from uh, ten percent to eighteen percent. Now we uh, uh, we will start from uh, our uh, PV three point zero. It's an area of high efficiency efficiency module. High efficiency uh, uh, model includes uh, high power, high reliability, and high energy yield. Uh, high power, uh, its main feature is uh, model pack technology. Uh, the efficiency is 21.5% uh, uh, to uh, for uh, uh, solar cells, and uh, for solar modules, about uh, uh, 18.6%. While for Longi Solar, Hammer 1 cell efficiency is uh, uh, 21.5 and model efficiency is uh, uh, more than 18.6%. So we can find that uh, uh, for 16 uh, cells, uh, model is uh, more than 300 what and uh, for uh, 72 sales uh, module is about uh, 316 uh, watt. Uh, use this this kind of high efficiency model pack module. The bio uh, both cost uh, cost savings can be realized from reduced uh, use of land, 
uh, Rankin, Campbell's, and uh, us, and uh, also labor. The second feature is uh, high reliability. Uh, high reliability uh, is uh, one main feature is uh, bank sheet. Uh, our uh, HAMO1 uh, module uh, applies uh, uh, DuPont tender up uh, based uh, bank sheet. This bank sheet is uh, only uh, with uh, 13 years real life field uh, performance uh, uh, verification adapted uh, to uh, various uh, projects. The second feature uh, of higher reliability is the solid module among, among uh, those top performers. Uh, we get the, these uh, uh, chapters uh, for all extended reliability tests in 2017 DNVGL reliability uh, scorecard. The third reliability uh, feature is about uh, uh, 10 years warranty about the materials and, uh, uh, and also 25 uh, years warranty. Uh, we can find that uh, for uh, the external power output. The second uh, feature about uh, high allergy uh, yield it's uh, uh, main feature is low temperature coefficient efficient and uh, low module operating temp temperature. Uh, while long solar HAM1 uh, uh, body uh, get, a, get a very good uh, performance in uh, TUV ReNet use uh, precisely. Yes, we uh, have one uh, module, one first place in model group, and also among all those uh, modules. Uh, these are uh, uh, projects uh, in uh, Sanya, uh, uh, Sanya of uh, Hainan province of China. We found that uh, uh, with, we use uh, eight pieces HAM1 module and uh, 219 uh, watts to with uh, mounting modules at uh, 216 uh, watts at uh, all about the uh, first tire one uh, module supplier. And also uh, three kilowatt uh, inventors, uh, the energy yield uh, calculation using mirrored module power. Uh, so uh, we, can, we also found that uh, higher uh, Allergy yield with HAM1 module becomes more permanent and low uh, irradiance. Next, I will talk about uh, the future technology trend. Uh, the future is a uh, uh, share increased uh, grandly. Uh, we uh, get uh, data from PV Inflink. We can find that uh, uh, for um, P type monoperc, the market share is increased uh, uh, grandly. Uh, it will uh, to 13.8% in 2020. So in the future, the model pack technology will dominate the market. The second uh, uh, technology trend is uh, model uh, facial to by facial power generation. Uh, Logic solar hammer two cell and module by facial T uh, is uh, more than 17, 75% it can significantly increase on energy yield. Because it's a double glass uh, lamination, so uh, 13 year power degradation warranty. Yeah, here is a project uh, uh, located in Kubuchi, in Mongolia, China. Uh, the power generation in July by, by facial module plus chanker is uh, uh, for 45% higher than mounting module plus fixed uh, uh, title, and 20% uh, higher than mounting a checker. HAM1 plus uh, checker is expected to generate 13% uh, more power for uh, one whole year. Uh, in the last, I would like to uh, share you about uh, launching solar. Uh, launching solar, 
uh, model capacity expansion plan, here is a plan. Uh, we now have about uh, 10%, uh, 20 gigawatt uh, wafer, and uh, for next year, we will have uh, 25 uh, gigawatt uh, uh, wafer. Uh, for module uh, business, we uh, now have uh, eight uh, gigawatt uh, uh, capacity, and uh, for next year, we will have 10 gigawatt. Uh, Long Solar is a company uh, located in China. We have uh, global uh, uh, presence. We have uh, now we we are planning to uh, have a factory in India in Andhra Pradesh. It's uh, still under construction. I think uh, we can uh, commission it at the end of this year. And also we have uh, factory in Malaysia, uh, and we have 500. Uh, um, megawatt uh, sales capacity and fi 500 megawatt uh, module capacity. So uh, beside our capacity, uh, we can find that technology solar is a financial strength. Uh, we have a very strong financial performance recognized by the industry. So Nongi Solar also on uh, Bloomberg PV module maker Taiwan list. Uh, it's about our technology strengths. We have uh, about uh, five to seven percent uh, uh, total revenue is invented in research and de development. We have about 119 uh, patents. Uh, on uh, ingot wafer cell and mo also module technology. We have uh, 700, uh, uh, yeah, technical, uh, technical team. Uh, at the last, uh, I would like to uh, share an uh, idea about uh, uh, we use uh, green energy to generate green energy. It means that uh, we have uh, sent up to uh, about three uh, factories in Yunnan province all of electricity is hydroelectricity. So we use those uh, hydroelectricity to uh, generate uh, uh, green energy. It means uh, to generate, uh, to produce our module, uh, ingot and uh, wafer. So that's all, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Jason. Now I'd like to request Mr. Shalesh Vade to give his presentation and then we'll move forward with the panel discussion. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Shailesh Vaidya. I'm from a company called Scorpius Trackers based in uh, Pune. Since time is short, I'll quickly run through my presentation and then we can uh, answer any questions. So Scorpius is a startup working in the solar tracking domain based out of Pune. Uh, we started four years ago and uh, as of now, we are the largest tracker company in Pune, in India. Uh, named as one of the top 10 in the world uh, by GTM. Uh, this year we have, in addition to trackers, we'll be launching a robotic module cleaning uh, solution and rooftop trackers as well. And uh, plans are to be pretty aggressively expanding in uh, various geographies across the world uh, in 18 and 19. Uh, why should one track the sun? Uh, the reasons are pretty obvious. Uh, when the tracker is working properly and the modules are pointing at the sun, through the day, you get between 18% to 25% more energy uh, from the same modules. So in India, typically, we have observed an energy gain of up to 19.5% maximum in South India. Uh, 22 to 24% is observed in places like Egypt or Jordan or uh, Turkey. Uh, all this happens at a capex. So if the capex is not more than 8 to 12% of the plant capex, then trackers make a lot of sense. There's a significant improvement in IRR and also payback of the whole investment is uh, within three years for trackers. This is the primary reason why we would use trackers. I'll skip this slide. The, does video play? Oh, it doesn't matter. This is, this is a small video of a tracking plant, but I don't think it's playing. In the interest of time, I'll skip this. So primarily there are two types of uh, tracking technologies. Uh, there is a single row tracker in which there is a motor per table and there is a multi row tracker or which is known also known as an array tracker which means multiple rows are connected by a central motor. 
So as of today, Scorpius is one of the few companies in the world to have launched both kinds of technologies, a single row as well as a multiple row technology. So we have now more than uh, 300 megawatts of uh, block trackers because we started off as a block tracker company. As you can see, there's a drive line here. which is connecting all the rows together and all the rows move in sync with each other because of one motor pushing and pulling the drive line. But in a single row system, you have a few advantages that each row is controlled by a separate motor. That means during a module cleaning cycle, as you can see in the image below, the adjacent rows can be made to face each other so that the same cart can clean modules from both tables simultaneously. So we now have installed both types of uh, tracker technologies. There are a lot of patents and IPs filed because uh, Scorpius is essentially a technology company. We outsource all our manufacturing, but we hold a lot of global patents. One of them in the tracking is that each table from the north to south direction can have two or three bends so that contour of the land can be followed instead of spending money on leveling of the land. So there are a lot of IP in play at Scorpius. I think these two videos are also not playing, so I'll just skip this one. Uh, like I mentioned, we have a lot of plants in India and outside. We have a few plants running in Japan, in Palestine, in Africa. So we have installed plants in different kinds of geographies where there is snow, sand, dust, etc. Our product is life cycle tested. The bearing or bushing which we use is life cycle tested in 50 years of operation without any maintenance. So some things which worry customers when they think of trackers is will there be a lot of cleaning to do for the bushings or will there be O&M in the plant or what will be the installation cost of a tracker. So as of today, the O&M on the mechanical side in a tracking plant is zero. You don't have to do any cleaning or any oiling on the moving parts. There's just electronics which uh, is installed additionally and electronics as you know is very robust. It's life cycle tested as per IEC standard. So trackers when selected properly are as good as installing a fixed tilt plant. We do a lot of uh, IoT solutions which are deployed along with our trackers to, for preventive maintenance of the plant and check the health of the whole system. Our tracker technology has now been uh, reviewed by Black and & Veatch uh, and has gone through a very rigorous independent engineers bankability review which uh, looks at the company and the technology on various aspects on design and in manufacturability and performance. So that makes us one of the few companies in the world to have a bankability review done for trackers. Uh, like I mentioned, we have trackers in many uh, geographies. Uh, in 2018, we'll be doing a lot of projects in Southeast Asia, in Middle East and in US and South America as well. We started off as a tracker technology company, but the plan this year is around September to launch a robotic module cleaning solution, which will be very unique. More details will be available soon. We have already commissioned a rooftop tracker uh, two years ago, and that's been under observation. Uh, in this June of this year, we'll be launching a very nice uh, rooftop uh, tracker. And integrated BOS, I'll talk about in my, uh, I can talk about offline. So that's about it now. I will go ahead with the panel discussion, I think. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shailesh, sir, for the wonderful, uh, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I think Shailesh, sir, is selling himself short. Uh, Shailesh, sir, is also the mascot of Prime Minister Modi doing the Made in India campaign because this guy has got the maximum number of trackers installed from, from India across the entire globe, right? So, uh, so round of applause for Shailesh, sir, please. Uh, on the panel discussion, uh, we have got a very interesting topic, uh, uh, EPC and system integration technology, but to steer the panel in the direction, uh, this, is, uh, this is somewhat, uh, 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 EPC and system integration has gone through various eras in itself, right? right from uh, places where we used to have 15 crore contracts to now where we have uh, four crores if you are very lucky. Uh, uh, what I would like to stay the direction towards is, uh, uh, is what are we expecting to do in future? How are we ready for future? And of course, we'll also be trying to uh, address the challenges uh, that we are facing today. Uh, ideally, uh, 
uh, if, if Anand sir would allow, uh, we would like to structure it with two minute opening remarks from all speakers, and then we can get into a panel mode instead of having a panel discussion right from the beginning. People can give their introductions and, and also uh, uh, give their opening remarks uh, after which we'll uh, proceed for panel. Uh, since I've been given the privilege to be the moderator, so uh, I can choose to be the first to go. Uh, there are clear trends which are emerging uh, in the EPC uh, system integration ONM space when it comes to solar. Uh, the first trend that we are seeing uh, is very interesting, which is globalization. People are looking at global portfolios and not only Indian portfolios nowadays. Uh, whether you have a Sterling Wilson, uh, which is having three gigawatt India portfolio, five gigawatt India portfolio next year onwards. Whether you have an Adani, which is building projects in India and Australia, a SoftBank with three gigawatt in Saudi Arabia, or even operation company and maintenance companies like ourselves with our partners in presence in 35 countries. So increasingly we are seeing that there is a globalization of, of uh, uh, supply of value chain right from the development to the uh, EPC to the operation and maintenance which is happening. Uh, another trend that we are seeing as a part of uh, partially as a part of globalization is that the players are increasing in size, which means there's also a level of consolidation which is happening. Uh, we, are, we were having a lot more IPPs earlier than we have right, right now. Uh, uh, everybody who had the capacity to invest 5 crores, 10 crores, 20 crores could become an IPP earlier. It's much difficult to do that right now. Uh, uh, we are having a lot less EPC supply contractors than we used to have right now. Uh, and same applies to everything else. So uh, this is also a phase where and we'll see the sizes of uh, limited number of companies grow very large and the other smaller companies will keep on getting acquired. So that's the that's second trend. And the third trend, which is almost synonymous now with, with solar, is the trend of cost reduction. We have seen cost reduction in tariffs. We have seen cost reduction in costs, uh, EPC costs. We have seen cost reduction in operation and maintenance cost. And, and uh, these things are not going to go away. And just to have some data to back it up, uh, these things are not specific to India, although we see ourselves as the champions of cost reductions globally. But if you look at the markets in Italy, Spain, Holland, uh, Saudi, and then uh, we talk about India, these cost reductions are even steeper in those geographies because India uh, came, uh, India saw solar only in 2009, 2010 onwards because those geographies have been seeing solar for the last 15 years, 20 years or more. So the cost reduction curves have been even more steeper in those geographies than what we have seen in India. Another interesting part where the Indian parts are converging with the global parts are also in terms of the inflation indexes. So far it was always assumed that uh, uh, things in India get costlier faster and that's why we need to have much higher uh, in, uh, escalations. Whereas what we are seeing actually is that Indian inflation rates have gone down in the last couple of years quite a lot. Uh, so much so that uh, we are only about 2% uh, higher than what might be a European average right now. Right, so, so uh, the point that I'm trying to make is that increasingly uh, the entire globe is following more or less the same trajectory and India doesn't seem to be different from, from that trajectory as well. Uh, last point which is uh, to do with uh, uh, Industry 4.0, the future of, uh, the future of uh, EPC and system integrations market. Uh, when it comes to cost reduction, what we are seeing that the cost reductions are going to be driven by innovation. The cost reductions are also going to be driven by digital and, and as one of the topic in today's discussions by IoT. What I mean by innovation is that, uh, uh, just as an example, uh, SoftBank is working out a way in which it is going to build a 3,000 megawatt portfolio in Saudi Arabia within six months without a single nut and bolt. Right, so, so they are developing systems wherein they can avoid the entire nut and bolt system. Clip-ons uh, which will hold the test of 25 years so that they are able to build a 3000 megawatt project within six months. That is an innovation which, will be, which we'll see a lot more of uh, coming in future. In an operation and maintenance space uh, coming from our background, uh, we are seeing that in the next 10 years, the cost will actually come down to one fourth of what it is today. If we are having four lakh rupees a megawatt cost today of operation maintenance, 10 years down the line, we'll have one lakh rupee a megawatt cost. But conversely, if digital and IoT was a part of 10,000 rupee a megawatt as of today in that cost, that will go up to 50,000 rupees, 60,000 rupees a megawatt. So a lot less people per megawatt, but a lot more automation. And as a result, a lot more higher cost on digital, overall much lower cost. 
another interesting trend in O&M that we are going to observe is uh, that we are going to have uh, escalation is a thing of a past. Uh, nobody is negotiating on escalations nowadays. People say that 3%, 5%, 9% escalations are going to be possible. Uh, in our uh, uh, about 1,600, 2,000 odd megawatts portfolio, we have seen that every year we are having to dip down on the prices instead of go up, right? Nobody is going to offer an escalation anymore. It's going to be who can offer a better reduction of prices the next year and the year after that. So those are some of my uh, uh, opening comments. Uh, we'll start off in the order that is written on the, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, sheets as well. I'll request Dheeraj Malani, sir, uh, either from here or from there, if you could give your opening remarks, please. Hello. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Dheeraj Malani. Uh, I'm taking care of the business development for Mahindra Sustain. We are the part of the Mahindra Group. And uh, we started Mahindra Sustain somewhere six years back. And uh, now we have a portfolio of 1.6 gigawatt plus in India. Uh, we are in various supply chains of the solar industry. We are into the development arm. We are into the EPC business. We are into the solar products business. That's the solar tracker. We have our own in-house developed SCADA system, string monitoring boxes, and various others. Apart from this, on the rural side also, we have developed some of the products like the solar dustbin and the uh, e-cycle, which is there in uh, under Proto right now. Uh, uh, so other than domestic business, now we have expanded ourselves in the international space as well and recently secured some two very big size uh, projects in uh, Sakaka and Bangladesh. So that is all about the Mahindra Sustain. And uh, well, I, I think Puneet has portrayed the entire picture of, of the solar industry here uh, in, a, in a very right fashion. What I would like to add upon here is going forward, we are going to have a very big size of the individual solar power projects going to be set up at a single space. As the past speakers have said that land is going to be a very, very critical factor because the timelines which are there uh, for the execution of the project is almost the same, whether it is a solar park-based project or a non-solar park-based projects. So I think that need to be reviewed that uh, if it is a non-solar park-based projects, the timeline should be such that the land acquisition can be possible in the time frame which is provided. Because you see, if land is not completed, your next step cannot be triggered. Uh, so that's from the land part and uh, executing the bigger size projects. I think on the supply chain side also, we have to think over, we have to develop such a robust uh, supply chain management, the skilled labors and other systems so that there would be no slippages in the timelines required to execute such projects. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dheeraj, sir. 